this is Amy from Peekaboo Pattern Shop, and today we're going to talk about knit neck bands and knit neck bindings. So the first one I have here to show you, this is a neck band. This is a very common finish on t-shirts. It's a more casual, sporty look. You will have a seam on the inside of your garment. So this is a neck band. They are normally about half an inch wide. Next is the knit binding. On a knit binding, the seam is completely enclosed. You'll use your binding fabric to wrap all the way around the seam on the neckline or arm opening, and everything is enclosed. It's really neat and tidy. It does take a little bit longer to sew. I don't think it takes that much longer, but it does give you a tidier finish on the inside. So here's the binding, and then once again, here's the neck band, which does have the seam on the inside. So the binding, normally a finished knit binding is about a quarter inch wide. So it's a little narrower. So one thing to keep in mind, if you are using a pattern that's drafted for bands, like this one, and you decide you want to do a binding instead, your finished neckline will be a little wider and a little deeper because instead of adding uh, to your neckline with the width of the band, you'll be folding it over essentially like this. And the seam goes for arm openings. So like on this, if I were to use a band instead, it would come up a little higher all the way around. It's not a huge difference, but that is something to take into consideration if you are um, adapting a pattern to use either bands or bindings and doing something different than the way it was drafted. So I'll be showing you how to sew the neck band and for the binding, I'm gonna show you two ways to sew it. The first is with this completely enclosed finish. There are no raw edges on this whatsoever. And the second is kind of the quick and easy cheater method. You do have a raw edge right here on the binding where you've just trimmed off the excess binding instead of folding it under. So let's get started. Let's start off by learning how to sew a knit band. So the first thing you need to do is take your band fabric and fold it in half with the wrong sides of the fabric together and press it flat. You'll notice the band is shorter than the piece of fabric you're going to attach it to. If your pattern doesn't have a pattern piece, maybe you're just uh, freehanding it or altering a pattern, 85% is a pretty standard measurement that's going to work well for most things. Depending on the stretch of your band, you might want it a little uh, shorter or longer than 85%, but that will work most of the time. So you'll pin the ends, we're attaching both sides of the band to the fabric. So you'll see it is shorter, it doesn't fit, that's okay, don't panic. Just going to stretch it like this until it fits, and then pin right in the middle. And we're just working on a small piece right now, but I'll show you how to do this on an actual garment in a minute. I'm using my serger to sew on the band. If you're using a sewing machine, just make sure you use a stitch with good stretch, like a zigzag stitch or a stretch stitch. So most of the time you'll be using a quarter inch seam allowance to attach this. So for a band uh, with a serger, that means you're just gonna sew it on. You're not really gonna be trimming anything off. So I'm stretching the band as I go. I had already had it pinned in place, but you can see it's shorter than the fabric I'm attaching it to. After you sew the band to your fabric, you're gonna flip the band up away from the fabric and then top stitch the seam allowance to the main part of your garment. I just use a long straight stitch in this example, which works really well on something that doesn't need much stretch, like a pocket. But if you're gonna do this for a neck band, you definitely need the stretch or it's not gonna fit over the person's head. So you'll wanna use like a cover stitch machine, a double needle, a zigzag stitch, a stretch stitch. Um, this is just like a longer straight stitch and you can see it still has a little bit of give but not as much as some of those other stitches will provide. So here's the wrong side. You can see the seam. The seam is pressed down, the band is pressed up, and it's top stitch. And that's your basic uh, knit band. 
Next, we're going to do a knit binding. Uh, if your pattern doesn't include pieces for a binding, I normally cut these a little longer than a band, closer to 90% of the uh, length of the piece I'm attaching it to, so you won't have to stretch it quite as much. Uh, you're gonna pin right sides together, only one edge of the binding instead of both edges. So when we did a band, we attached both edges. For a binding, you only attach one edge initially. So you're gonna pin the ends, and then stretch to fit. You're not gonna have as much stretching to do as you did with a band. And then sew together along this edge. I just attached the binding with my serger. And just like with the neck band, you can use a regular sewing machine for this step. Just use a stitch with some stretch. So then you're going to press the binding up, flip it over, binding and seam allowance are both up. You're going to fold the raw edge of the binding under a quarter inch and then fold it over once more so it's wrapped all the way around the seam allowance. Everything is fully enclosed on both front and back. So then I'm going to clip this in place. We'll be sewing from the right side of the fabric, so that's why I'm putting my clips this direction. So you can see all fully enclosed. Both sides really pretty, and now I'm just gonna go sew right along the bottom edge of this fold. I just sewed my binding in place. I used a cover stitch, so that's why you see two rows of stitching. So on the back, it has these loops, and you can see I did not sew perfectly straight. I actually find this is easier to sew binding with this method with a regular sewing machine. I normally use a long straight stitch or a stretch stitch, and that typically has enough give um, if it's something that needs a lot of stretch, like a swimsuit, then I normally use a zigzag stitch and that gives a lot of stretch. So now I'm going to show you the second way to finish a knit binding. I already have one edge of the binding sewn on with right sides together. I'm going to flip it up just like before, flip my project over here. Binding and seam allowance are both up. I'm going to fold this down. And instead of tucking this raw edge under here, I'm just going to top stitch it just like this and then trim away the excess fabric. Now once you get really good at this uh, method, you might decide rather than trimming, you'd rather just cut your uh, binding piece like a quarter inch narrower and then you won't have anything um, left over to trim. But if you're new to binding, I think this method is really easy and it's going to end out end up looking pretty good. Uh, you will have a bit of a raw edge, but you can trim it so it's all nice and even. So you can see I just went up, covered the seam allowance. Now I'm going to go stitch it down and then we'll trim. I just sewed it down, so now all that's left to do is to just trim this extra fabric off. And what I do like about using this method so even though you have to take the time to go back and do a little trimming, uh, sometimes you get a more consistent finish. Uh, you don't have to worry about your fabric shifting as much as you do when you're trying to keep the edge perfectly folded under. You also have a less bulky binding because all this fabric um, is no longer in the binding. We just cut it off, we don't need it. You have three layers of the binding essentially instead of four when you do the fully finished uh, it's a little thicker binding. It is nice and enclosed and you don't have this raw edge. So there's benefits to both. You'll have to experiment and see which one you like better. I do recommend this kind of cheater method if you've never done a binding or if you're working with a fabric that's really difficult. I This is what I normally do for swimsuits. I just think it's easier and especially if I already have elastic included in the seam, I don't want to deal with the extra bulk. But if I'm making uh, like a shirt for myself and I want it to be really nice, I normally use this method. So try both, see what you like. Gives you basically the same look on the front and just slightly different on the back. Now that I've shown you uh, three different ways to do your bands and bindings, I'm going to show you how you do it on an actual project. So I already have the shoulders and the side seams on this tank top sewn together with right sides together and I'm going to apply the neck binding all in one piece. So this is called putting it on in the round. 
Now, if you want to sew it in flat like we did before, that's how most store-bought items are done. So let me just turn this inside out so you can see. So they left one shoulder seam open, put the binding in flat, all in one piece, and then sewed the shoulder seam. So you end up with this seam in your binding, which always kind of bothers me. And then you have to tack it down on the right side. But if you're more comfortable doing bands or bindings in flat, that is an option. So you sew one shoulder seam, you do the neck, and then on the sides, you just leave the sides open and you do the band or binding and then sew them up and then they normally tack it down so it doesn't rub, but it is kind of bulky. So depends on what you find easier and which finish you like. I like doing mine in the round. So I did shoulders and side seams and then for my uh, neck binding and arm binding pieces, I sewed those together as well with right sides together. So if you're doing a neck band, uh, I'll show you how to do that first. I'm actually gonna do bindings on this particular tank top, but I'll show you how you pin it for a neck band. You're going to fold the neck band with wrong sides together, so that encloses the neck band seam, and then press it flat, so it'll look like this, and then you'll um, find the center back and pin that to the center back of the neckline because you don't want a neckband seam right at the front of your project. And then find the center front of the neckband. You know, you could mark all of this in advance, but I'm just showing you how I normally do it. I sew quickly and this works pretty well for me. And I don't like marking things. But you could mark the center points and quarter points on your neck band ahead of time if you wanted to. So to find where to line this up, you know, the quarter of the neck band, it is not going to go with your shoulder seam because the front uh, neckline is lower. So it's going to take more than, you know, half of this is right here. If we put that at the shoulder, you can see it's way too much for the back and not enough for the front. So I just stretch it like this and then pin. And I normally pin at the shoulder seam so that I can put the seam going towards the back. And you know, if you're new to neck bands, you're probably gonna wanna use more pins than this. I have sewn a lot of these and I'm comfortable with it. So I just pin center front, center back, and shoulder seams. So that's how you do the neck band. And then just like I showed you before, after you sew it on, you'll flip it up and top stitch all the way around. So now we're gonna do the binding. Instead of attaching both seams or both sides of your band, uh, you're just gonna attach one if you're doing a binding. So you can pin center back, just like before. Make sure you don't have it twisted. So find the center point, that goes in center front. And just same thing, stretching it evenly, pinning at the shoulder, and then you're gonna attach one side. So I'm gonna go do that and then show you how I'm gonna finish it. As you're sewing, you're gonna be stretching the binding to fit the neckline. Make sure you have all your edges aligned, which if you used more pins is gonna be easier. Make sure, and make sure you're not stretching your garment, which is my shark fabric. You don't stretch that, you only stretch the binding, which is the navy. So you just stretch it enough to match your garment. I attached one edge of my binding with right sides together 
to my neckline. So now I'm ready to finish it. I'm gonna use the second option I showed you. So I'm gonna flip both of these up, fold this down so it covers my seam allowance and pin that in place. And then after I'm done stitching it, I'll trim off the excess binding. I have the binding all top stitched, so now I'm just trimming the excess. So as you trim, make sure you are only trimming off the excess binding and you don't accidentally cut a hole in your project. Okay, so that is all finished. Let me show you what it looks like right side out. And then we'll do the arms. And often you'll find after you top stitch that it doesn't lay as perfectly as you might think it should. And that's okay. Go give it a good press with your iron and it's going to sit much better after that. So unlike the uh, tank top I showed you earlier, since I sewed this on in the round, our shoulders are nice and enclosed. There is no seam on either of them, which I love. I finished sewing the uh, bindings on both of the arms and as I showed you before I cut the binding a little narrower and then I just didn't trim any of the excess off. I just left it. So that was really quick and easy and this is all done and ready for summertime. I hope you have a lot of fun sewing up a bunch of tees and tanks and trying out sewing uh, knit neck bands and knit bindings. Thanks for following along. This is Amy from Peekaboo Pattern Shop. Happy sewing.